Charlie do good. God. I want you to tell somebody the kingdom of God is powerful. The kingdom of God is powerful. I don't know about you, but I tell you, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of God. And we are going to rejoice once again as soon as we finish. There is this lovely song I learned in Apostle Chiwe's church. I'll go carry my handkerchief. I'll go live on to the world. 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 Take your Bibles with me and let's open to the name of Jesus. Jesus has many names. And I want you to be aware that everything we are doing here is in the Bible. So let's look at Jesus in Hebrews 3.1. Hebrews 3.1. Thank God for Prophetess, very powerful reader. And I would appreciate if she helps us with this reading. Amen. Amen. If you don't have a Bible, act like you have one. It is not good not to have the word of God with you. And if you can't read and write, start moving your lips and act like you are reading, and God will bless your desire. Hebrews 3.1. Thank you. Hebrews 3.1. Therefore, holy brothers and sisters, who share in the heavenly calling, thoughtfully and attentively consider the apostle and high priest whom we confess as ours when we accepted him as savior, namely Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to shake three people and tell them Jesus is the apostle of the house. 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 I know there are some people over here who doesn't know that Jesus is an apostle. And Jesus left the earth and gave it to us. Let's be seated. He left the earth and gave it to us. And he said we should occupy the earth till he comes. And so we are representing Jesus. Amen. So there is nothing wrong if we bear his name. We have two names. And the first one is Christ-like. Which has been changed into Christian. But the actual name is Christ-like. So that's everybody's standing here. If your name is Mary, then your first name is Mary. And your same name is what? Christ-like. Mary, Christ-like. Put your name there. Call yourself. These are the children of God. You are the son of the Most High God. Clap your hands for having a better same name. It has become the will of God that after a while he will bestow upon his people some of his responsibilities and it is usually called the yoke of christ the yoke of christ which is part of the ceremony we'll be doing in matthew eleven twenty nine. the yoke of christ he gives you some of his belly not all but some and jesus himself said my yoke is light my yoke is light so when you get born again you are delivered from the yoke of Satan. Yes. And the yoke is broken because of the anointing. Yes. Satan's yoke is horrible. Mm -hmm. But the yoke of Christ, he says, is light. Why is it light? Because he bears with you. Yes. And the anointing keeps you, so you are able to carry. We want to proceed immediately with the information we have that if Jesus' name is an apostle, then it's okay if we call ourselves as his name. Nevertheless, the disciples that followed Jesus did follow him for three years, doing theory and practicals, and then watching and walking with him. He will now leave them as the founding fathers of the earth, hand over authority to them authority to them so they can continue till he returns and he did tell them occupy till i come 
we have found by the grace of God and by the Holy Spirit's own selection and maiden of the Lord that has been found to bear the burden of Christ in the capacity of an apostle. Let's look at Luke 11, 49. Luke 11, 49. And whilst you are opening to that place, I'm taking my time to thank God for the clergy in the house who are all part of this wonderful ceremony. Luke 11, 49. He says, therefore also, will you do that for me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Luke 11, 49. For this reason also, the wisdom of God said in the scriptures, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will put to death, and some they will persecute. All right. So uh, we are rejoicing not because there is a fashion in the house or a style in the house, but we are actually rejoicing because somebody is willing to die mm -hmm. for Christ. And that's why we are rejoicing. And it's a great joy if you can make up your mind that with God, with God, and without nobody, you walk with God. And if you have to die for him, it is well with your soul. Amen. amen. So I know the place is quiet. Nobody is saying amen. amen. But, but, but I, I can't wait to go back home. And there's no place like heaven. So that's the introduction of what we are about to do. Now watch this. In the Bible, we have history of how the apostles wept. The book of Acts is actually the beginning of the New Testament. And it tells us how God calls them. We also have history of Ecclesia of how they were killed. And we don't have any of these apostles that Jesus handed over to that ever died any natural death except his last loving baby, Apostle John who died a natural death and he actually died a natural death because they couldn't really kill him. They tried killing him and he would not die so they left him alone in the island of Patmos. Nevertheless, the one who did not give himself for the Lord to Matthias decided to commit suicide by himself and we all know his name, the church accountant who is Judas is Iscariot. So if you are an accountant, may the Lord help you. <laughs> we are here because something happened in history. Jesus actually wears a white garment and he has a throw over him with his prayer shawl. And death became rampant for these great apostles. He handed over 12 but later we will count 70 and they all died in this beautiful white garment and it was not a good scene the followers and those who had took over the church still in their white apparel they kept killing them on the road and satan thought that he could frighten the men of god and the women of God in their white apparel. But something powerful happened when all these apostles held a crusade from Jerusalem to Rome. And they wanted the empire to understand that death cannot separate them from the love of God. And therefore they took a dye and placed their white garment in the red dye. And everybody's garment was in red, and they made a march to the empire. And from then, when you see, and when Constantine, the empire that really got born again, saw the power of Christ upon the people, he accepted and ordained that anyone you see in a red garment, known as an apostle, should never be killed. Yes, it is true that Jesus has said, he that wants to save his life will lose it. But the one that loses it will gain it. Because of this powerful crusade and demonstration that apostles did to give peace 
and rest to the Christian community on earth. Apostles' uniform has been officially and spiritually ordained as a red color. In Exodus chapter 26, verse 1 and 2, you write it, we don't have time to read everything. The Lord ordained particular colors that should be used as a priestly garment and as a curtain in the house of the Lord. Set as purple, red, and sapphire blue. And so everyone should take time to walk through these stages of God's divine colors. The pastors are known as servants who are beginners. And they wear the omnex, which is the two stones on the shoulders of Aaron, according to Exodus 28. And omnex is a color which is black, and it represents sin. And the Bible says when we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. And so when a person is called as a pastor, may we excuse them. If you know about their past life, because they are already in black, they have accepted that they are sinners saved by grace. They have accepted that they are taking the first step in Christ. Excuse them when they do any mistake. Judge them not because they judge themselves. We have these pastors in these glorious omnex dresses. And so are their rings. But after being a pastor for a while, serving and taking care of the sheep. You come to a place where your prophecies come true, your nature comes true, and your caring for the sheep comes through. And automatically, even those who doubted you, reverence you. And so the body of Christ would find it difficult to just put you in a category of one who does mistake. We move from pastors to reverend. The reverence uniform is sapphire, which is actually the foundation of Christ. The Bible tells us in Ezekiel that his footstool is sapphire. As well as the skies, where the reverend must be respected, respected and placed in a high place. It is not good that if we, the Pentecostals, and the SU dispensation, as we studied yesterday here very thoroughly, would want to learn from the Bible and don't know much and just do things by assumption or by any kind of behavior. When the founding fathers did a thing, there is an anointing that goes with it. And in the kingdom of God, ignorance is no excuse. I would want everybody to adhere to my utterance mandated by the Lord to educate the body of Christ so far as the Pentecostals are concerned because the Orthodox sometimes wonder where we come from, maybe from the moon, because we are supposed to study the word and know to do it right. The days of SU where uniforms were not important was because it was necessary that we talk about Jesus the more. But we have come to close of age where the New Testament and the Old Testament is bound together. If you are really born again here, you know you are not comfortable having just the New Testament Bible. You will need to read about Habakkuk, about Haggai, about Zechariah. You have to read about all because it is time for us to learn all in all. We therefore stand here on the behalf of the body of Christ to let you know that God has found someone who have walked through the stages of being a pastor and being a reverend, being respected through her suffering. Sapphire is actually representing the fireworks of God. And we did it think that she has qualified to stand even to die for Christ. If you have not yet received oil for this uniform, don't wear it. I thank God that I've informed a lot of churches and a lot of ministers and they have understood why something strange did happen to them in their houses. Sometimes the children go under attack. Sometimes something terrible happens. 
because what you wear is what they salute you for. And there is no general who will put on, or there is no lieutenant who will put on a general uniform to war. David did something to a lieutenant. When he wanted to kill the lieutenant, which was the wife of Bathsheba, he placed the lieutenant in the uniform of a general, placed him on a front-line battle. And the Bible says it did not take an hour. He was a dead man. We see people wearing an apostle's uniform and pose as such without mandate and authority and bring trouble and damnation upon their children. They take titles without laying of hands. But we read yesterday very well from my son, Apostle Samuel, that we are supposed to activate the ways of laying of hands. And so you cannot just get up in the army of the kingdom of God and just appreciate and color and go wear it. Satan knows the rules. He was there when the Bible was written. And to be ignorant about these spiritual things is very dangerous for your home. I remember there was a time a lady that I had to ordain as a pastor fought me and fought the house, fought the husband that she needs to be called a reverend. I would explain anything, it was a tug of war. On that day of ordination, she, whilst people were seated, she said, if you don't call me reverend, I won't step inside the chapel. People were seated. And I should have come to the public to say, okay, I've changed my mind. But those days, I was very nice. That's why I cannot be too nice with you. When you are wrong, you are very and very wrong. I ordained her as reverend, and within 16, about six, seven months, prophetess knows of this. The sun started smoking. The house was in a mess. Almost lost her marriage because Satan came to give her salutation. Then she said, Mama, I'm sorry. I said, yes. Sometimes children cry out for things that they know they should not take it. But I've learned from that, and I will not do what you don't deserve. There's nothing like jumping the stairs. We go one, two, three, four. Anything that comes from God is very slow. People stop church and leave church and change churches because of titles. But if you know what is within it, you will be careful. I think you will appreciate me with a clap of it. And shout yes! Here we come. Tried by fire, pain unbearable, sorrow untold. People go to the market and they say, I like the red. Another says, Oh, I love the purple. Don't worry until your time comes. There's something good about God. What you will be was written before you were born. And when you wait for your time, he brings it beautifully. Yes. And you can imagine us all here. Some of us have left our work just to be here to appreciate one woman who has stood for God in pain and in sorrow. And you all can testify that truly she's been through the fire. We will honor her in the house of the Lord as it is written in Luke eleven forty nine. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute. Well, I can't tell tomorrow. I don't know which of the categories that the maiden of the Lord will face again. But I am happy to say that she says to everyone, it's all about Jesus. Whether she be slain, her garment is already soaked in the blood of Jesus. Whether she be persecuted, I believe she's dead enough that she doesn't need to die again. When Jesus called Peter, 
He said, your name is Simeon. But if I will leave the church for you, then you need to be turned into a stone. And a lot of people don't understand this. When I have pastors call me and crying all day, all night, I just wonder. Because before you start to do church, you better be dead like stone. Stone here, no insults. Stone here, no praises. And I remember when I was a day, I was a good orator, not like now. I could preach and really do it. You know, jump and do all the acrobatic with heavy handkerchief, wiping sweat. The energy was there. And you know, sometimes when you have energy and you are using it, you think is the anointing. But if you jump and preach all the preaching and the people do not remember what you say, that is called acrobatic display. <laughs> And in those days, after all the jumping, people come to me and they say, wow, that was a powerful preaching. And I feel good about myself. And my walkings do change. And even my English, I make it better. But one day, my mother called me and said, why do you love the people praising you like this? I said, mama, but I'm good. I'm good. So they ought to pray. Say, if they ought to praise me, say, mm -hmm. if they praise you and it's good for you, then the day they criticize you, I will be here. My laughs are here. My shoulders are available. You're going to cry out. I said, no, I'm just too good that nobody can dare play with me. And when the days came, the persecution started. Started from my blue lashes to my red lipstick to my red nails and everything. And this type of persecution, if you are married, you may even blame your husband is the cause of it. Church persecution can cause a divorce. Until my mother said, I told you, if praises is sounding good to you, then criticism will sound bad to you. But he said, Diana, change to be a stone. Feel nothing. Jesus felt nothing. The Bible said when they went to him to praise him as the king, the Bible says, for he knew what is in the heart of man, and he did not give his heart to them. Many years ago, I did an ordination for my daughter, prophetess. And when I was walking away, I saw her children all arraying around her. And I said to her, baby, just remember, you cannot love them with your heart. Love them with your appointment. And she called me back and said, Mommy, how can I love people without my heart? I said, your heart is for Jesus. Just love them with an appointment. Know that is your duty. So as I'm standing here, even if I did not want to come, I have to come because I ought to come. And it doesn't matter how the situation may be, whether where I'm staying is comfortable or not, I ought to stay. Because it's not about how you want to feel, it's about the assignment you have to do. But the time came and she called me, she said, wow, mama, I am so heartbroken. I said, thank you. You are no more flesh, you are now stone. Hold the skin tough, tougher than stone. You now are qualified to stand as a prophetess. Something will happen to you. You will almost think there is no God. That same God that spoke to Jeremiah. And Jeremiah as a young man by 19 years stood in public and said, The Lord has touched my mouth. And he has said to me, Root out, pull down, destroy. And every night was clapping, go Jeremiah, go. By the time we got to the 15th chapter, Jeremiah said, Can't be the day. I was born. That thing that may make you feel good is the same thing that will kill you. But accept yourself to die in Christ. And Paul said something. When Paul had had a betrayed, betrothed wife, Paul being an aggressive man, people say he never married. Who told you that? You cannot be a Pharisee except you are married. So Paul had a fiancé, a very beautiful woman, Coca-Cola shape, figure eight. As Paul would travel and come back, 
came back home one day and found his friend upon that woman. And Paul says, I don't need to marry. I will be traveling. Paul now says, if, if he's left with me alone, let nobody marry. Something happened to him. And now he said in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. The life that I live from now hence, I live not for myself, but I live it for God. Yes. Have you gotten there that you hand over desires to only Christ? This is where she is. She doesn't care anymore. She has walked with the Lord. I have walked through her head. There were times I had to call her and say, Mama, Mama, come on, put on some lipstick. Cheer up, put on some lipstick. Make yourself bright. She became so deep, deep, deep. Deeper to even join in the deep. But I thank God I'm around to make her look charismatic. Today we stand in ovation I bring to the altar the dear apostle who have to be affirmed and enthroned in the city as island, not just Dragda, but in the entire island apostle, shall we receive it before the altar? <laughs> God, this is your wedding day. A lot of people who can spend money and build houses pay so much, but they don't want to pay for their wedding day. We have two weddings we do. The wedding with a human being and the wedding with the most high God. Hallelujah. Take your time and plan it. Clothes, very important. Flight, very expensive. Feeding extraordinary. This is what we call real child of God. You can build big houses and when it comes to your ordination, you wear tattered clothes with no respect and stand there and the man of God hits your forehead and say, go, you are an apostle. I don't do it like that. The Bible tells us in Exodus 28, he said, make garment for the apostle. Make garment for the bishop. That which is expensive. We spend money buying coffee, 4,000 pounds, 4,000 whatever. And when it comes to the things of God, we complain and, and knock. Because our priorities have been misplaced. But if you know about this king of kings, you will not wear just anything and stand before him. Yes. Woe are you who don't know anything and yet you don't know that you don't know. Mm. You can conclude by yourself. Since God says we shouldn't call anybody a fool, you may know what I mean. Woman of God, as you stand before the people and before the altar of the Most High God, I ask you, with your hands up, would you continue publicly to serve the Almighty God? If you will, say, yes, I will. Jehovah, be my help. Yes, I will. Jehovah, be my help. Number two, woman of God, after all these sufferings you have been through from your childhood till now, would you continue to serve the people, love them, even though they may not be okay? There are some sheep, you give them food, give them all the grass, they refuse to give you milk, they refuse to give you wool, and they refuse to give you meat. We will continue to have ungrateful people as we pastor them. If you will continue, say, I will, Jesus Christ, be my example. I will, Jesus Christ, be my example. I thought somebody would say amen. amen. The last question, would you continue to trust this Holy Spirit. That when he will speak to you, will do what he says. Yet though you may not comprehend or apprehend, but you trust his voice. If you will continue to listen to him instead of listening to people, 
you did a good thing by continuing to walk with the Lord. Even now, if you will say, I will, the Holy Spirit be my help. I will, the Holy Spirit be my help. I want to do that. We therefore will proceed with consecration. I would ask you to sit down, watch and be praying, and desire that God will touch you. We will bring to the podium, as Jesus gave us an example in John 13, that Christ himself, with his position, still dropped all his garments, wrapped a towel around him, and washed the feet of his apostle. We will therefore call an apostle to do that for you. We have come to the beginning of consecration. We welcome to the podium Apostle Chiwe, our dear mother of the city, for washing of things. And everybody say, Yeah, the scripture is in John chapter 13. From verse 1 to 17 of the washing of face. John 13. From verse 1 to 17. Now therefore, the Passover feast, Jesus knew that his hour had come and it was time for him to leave this world. And he returned to the Father having greatly loved his own. Who were in the world, he loved them and continuously loves them. With his perfect love to the end eternally. It was during supper when the devil had already put the thought of betraying Jesus into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son. That Jesus, knowing that the Father had put everything in his hands, that he had come from God and was now returning to God, and got up from supper, took off his outer robe, taking a servant towel, he tied it around his waist, then he poured water into the basin, and began washing the disciples' feet, and wiping them with the towel, which was tied around his waist. When he came to Simon Peter, he said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied to him, you do not realize now what I am doing, but you will fully understand it later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. We can have nothing to do with each other. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, in that case, wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, Anyone who has better needs only to wash his feet and is completely clean. And you, my disciples, are clean, but not all of you. For he who was going to betray him, for the reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put on his outer robe and reclined at the table again, he said to them, do you understand what I have done for you? You call me teacher, Lord, and you are right in doing so. But that, but that is who I am. So if I, the Lord, am the teacher, washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. For I gave you this as an example, so that you should do in turn as I did to you. I assure you, I most solemnly say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is the one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed, happy, favored by God, if you put them in, into practice and faithfully do them.
the clergy for laying of hands. upon David and David became what is decreed. Oh Lord, I lift up the home of your presence and I ask that as before that the blood of Jesus will speak for your hand and the presence of the Most High will endow her that she will be raptured in your presence. I pray, oh Lord, for this is not by our might, but by your spirit. Neither our chariots and horses, but your spirit. I call the oil in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And we have the clergy praying in the spirit right now. Roche say by the authority of God, by the grace of Christ, by the message of the most high, we speak and declare that the woman of God received impartation, received impartation by the laying of hands. We declare and decree that the wisdom of the Lord, that the grace of the Lord, that the hand of the Lord shall rest upon you. We ask for answer. We ask for might. We ask for the fear of the Lord. We ask for the might of the Lord that will rest upon you. Even the spirit of understanding, we activate your books of life. We bring to pass that we God has written about you. Raise the lava hand that I ask. Raise the lava hand over and day. Rush it to the lava hand that I have. You shall fulfill your day. You will finish your assignment. Let have no right over you. So all that you are going to do be completed. By the laying of hands, I release favor. I release grace. I release power. I release authority. Ye Rabasanda. And I declare and decree that you will be all that is written about you. Your generation will find you blessed. Your children will call you best. Your grandchildren will call you best. That which God has purpose about you shall come to pass. by declare your people become a day of God's visitation. When you go to bed, God will speak to you. I release your ears to hear. I release your eyes to see. I release your nose to discern. I speak your, your tongue to declare the work of the Lord. As it is written, that Moses touched the toes of Aaron, Amen. that wherever he would go, his foot would possess the field. it is written, wherever you step your foot, may Satan bow. Whatever you declare, may it come to pass. Bring your tongue. May the power of the apostle be bestowed upon you by authority, by decree, and by the counsel 
will of God. Amen. I empower you Amen. to move forward. Amen. 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 I hope for the money you need to do your work. Amen. You shall not lack. And I declare you consecrated in the name of the Father. In the name Welcome to the podium, our own bishop, consecrated since 2001, to proceed with dressing. God bless you. Be seated. Ephesians chapter 6, 14 to 18. Ephesians 6, 14 to 18. So stand firm and hold your ground. Have tightened the white band of truth. Personal integrity, moral courage around your waist. Having put on, having put on breastplate of righteousness and upright heart. And having striped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm footed stability and the readiness pronounced by the good news. Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Amen. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Come on, let's get a weakness in the house. The next one is the Shivan, which represents servanthood. The scriptural reading, Matthew chapter 24, verse 46. Matthew chapter 24, verse 46. Matthew 24, verse 46. And he said, Blessed is that faithful servant when his master returns and finds him doing so. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The next one is the Shashubeh. Scriptural reading from Isaiah 52, verse 7, which means the wings of an eagle. The Shashabe represents the wings of an eagle. Amen. And scripture are reading Isaiah 52 verse 7. Isaiah 52 verse 7. How beautiful and delightful on the mountains are the feet of him who bring good news, who announce peace, who bring good news of good things, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. We do this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on, I think we should have a better witness in the house. The next scripture reading will be Matthew 11, verse 29, which is the stove. Matthew eleven twenty nine. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. Follow with me as my disciple, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest, renewal, blessed quiet for your soul. Amen. Amen. All right, the next one is scriptural reading is Mark chapter 8 and verse 34 which is the Victoria Cross Mark chapter 8 verse 34 and it says Jesus called the crowd together with his disciples and said to them if anyone wishes to follow me as my disciple he must deny himself, set aside selfish interest, and take up his cross, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come, and follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living, and if need be, suffering of the heart, dying of faith in me. Amen. I don't put this on because you put it on. You're going to have problems <laughs> that you've got to take your cross. The devil's not going to stand around thinking, oh look, you've, got, you, you've come out now. And the devil's going to attack. But you know you've got the Lord there. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. And when you put it on, you're taking it like he took your sins you know that he's with you. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. And she does this in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. As we welcome our bishop one more time to the podium. Come on, let's get a witness in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
All right, the next one we are going to do is the school's cup. Um, the scriptural reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. For who has known the mind and purpose of the Lord, so as to instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ to be guided by his thoughts and purposes. Amen. This is the Skulls Cup. Microphone. Woman of God. It's not a fashion. Either in the royal heart, just for the beauty of it. But this is to cover your mind. A symbol that you continue to think like Christ. I wear you the Skulls Cup. Keep thinking as Christ and have the mind of God. Don't let anyone talk you into anything until God speak to you. From hence, your thoughts, your imagination for Christ. All right, the next one is the signet ring. The reading is from Haggai chapter 2, verse 23. Guide chapter 2 verse 23 and we read on that day declares the Lord of hosts I will take you Zerubbabel the son of Shedeon my servant declares the Lord I will make you through the Messiah your descendant like a signet ring for I've chosen you as the one with whom to renew my covenant to David's line declares the Lord of hosts. There are three stages of Christianity. If I can break it down in the Hebrew, we have the first stage, which is called the baby stage. It's called Technon. And the Hebrew will not do a baby dedication or an outdoorage. They only say, take the child to the temple and present the child to God, and they walk quietly home. If you are a Christian, I suggest that you don't make too much noise on the baby. I see we the Africans making a tease with our children so the barren feels miserable. We make so much noise, but the Hebrew just call, even if it's a son, calls it a baby. That stage is a stage of high responsibility. And this stage, the Bible tells us in Luke, that Jesus was taken to the temple with a presentation to the Lord. He was dedicated unto the Lord. The second stage is called the Hio, the Technion. The Technion is the adolescent age. When Jesus appeared at the age of 12, the Hebrew would still call his son a baby. But the, st the third stage, which is called the Heo stage, is a stage that the father will now do an outdoorry and a name ceremony for the child. For the, ch the father will say, you are qualified to sign my checks. You are qualified to be called a son. I hand over my authority to you. The Bible tells us 
on the day of Jesus al Dori, as soon as Jesus came out of the water, when this pastor John the Baptist baptized him, there was an announcement in heaven that said, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. It was a procedure and a culture of a Hebrew. The Hebrew would therefore wear his son a ring and rise on his chair and give that chair to the son to inherit his property. That's when they do son adultery or daughter adultery. But the world doesn't do it like that. A child that doesn't know how to write his name. We hip hop parties put their names on the Facebook, adore this little baby, expose this baby to powers that he knows nothing about. Watch Jesus. At his baby age, he was hidden in Egypt. Mm -hmm. I pray for you that your born again will be appropriate one. Amen. Watch the culture of Christ and do it. Amen. Today, woman of God, you have served, you have served the people. And the people themselves present to you a signet of the right authority to sign the checks of God, Amen. to call those that be not to be. Yes. And when you bind on earth, yes. it shall be bound Amen. in heaven. Yes. When you lose on earth, it shall be loose in heaven. Yes. And when you the signet of authority, Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. in the name of the Son, Amen. and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can I hear everyone say Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The next one is benediction. And the scriptural reading is from Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 27. Numbers chapter 6, 24 to 27. The Lord bless you Amen. and keep you. Amen. Protect you, sustain you, guide you. Amen. The Lord make his face shine upon you with favor Amen. and be gracious to you, Amen. surrounding you with love and kindness. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance, face upon you Amen. with divine approval Amen. and give you peace and tranquility in heart and life. So Aaron and his sons shall put my name upon the children of Israel, Amen. and I will bless them. Amen. And so the children of Israel are instructed to wait at every time after church service and receive from the Lord what is called Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah means the glory of the Lord rest upon your head. And the man of God, the woman of God, to share that benediction, will stretch his hands and open all the ten fingers and ten representing the glory of God, that it may be upon the people. This benediction is so necessary that we wear you the benediction cope that you will not forget to bless your people when they come to your presence and the presence of the Lord. Amen. Give you the authority to send them home, bring them back. Each time you meet with the benediction cope in the name of the Father, Amen. in the name of the Son, Amen. in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We heard from daddy at the ordination of your daughters. You will continue to speak truth. Amen. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Amen. But something happened to the prophet. And the Lord said to him, take the scroll and eat. It tasted sweet in his mouth, but in his belly it was bitter. But I want to remind you of your clergy, your county. That when the people make your belly bitter, let it not come from your mouth. Amen. But you always bless them when you open your mouth. Amen. 
Remember, we said so. Amen. We declare you as a full pontiff from generation to generation. Amen. May this blessing follow your children, Amen. your children's children, Amen. that the mark of the high priest remain in your house. Amen. We honor you before the throne of God. And that which they bear witness on earth is a witness in heaven. Amen. We say to you, you are a full pontiff, not to this chapel alone, to the entire nation. Amen. Globally, Amen. this is the woman Amen. of God. Amen. Come on, can we get a witness in heaven? Alright, the last one is my time. Thank you. The scriptural reading is Zechariah chapter 3 verse 5. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 5. And he said, And I, Zechariah said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. Mm. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with rich garments. And the angel of the Lord stood fast. And Ezekiel chapter 29, verse 6. No, Exodus, I think. Okay. Right. Praise the Lord. Zachariah, Zachariah stood before watching Joshua being dressed up. And because he is a prophet, he had the audacity to act. To the dressing of Joshua the priest. You see, with this mitre, it means anyone who sees you can think of church. It's in the shape of a church. And the church has a high point with a cross at the top. You have the right to add and you have the right to subtract. But just as we read, Zechariah said, add glory to this one. I pray that at every time, when you say to the Lord, bless my people, add glory, God will listen, Amen. as it is said. And I place upon you the crown to remind everybody here from henceforth that you bear in your body the marks of Christ. Yes. And what you do is church. Amen. We cry you as one fighting with Christ in battle, finishing with Christ, and meeting Christ face to face on that day. Amen. In the name of the Father Amen. and of the Son Amen. and of the Holy Ghost. Can somebody shout glory? glory? I think we can do better. Say shout glory. glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, the last is the sword. And the scriptural reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. For the word of the Lord is living and active, full of power, making it operating, energizing, effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of the soul and spirit, the completeness of the person, and both joints and marrow, the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. This will hang in your office. Right at your back in your office. 
If anybody said that office, they may speak true. With a symbol of the authority of the word of God. Speak the word. Always the word. Amen. Nothing by, by the word. Amen. Make war. Shatter the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Overthrow evil thrones. Amen. Destroy witchcraft. Amen. Call forth the word of the Lord. Amen. And it shall be. For as the church says, Amen. Heaven agrees. Amen. Yeah. is not a building it's a church it's to say when she sit down to judge about the church when she sit down to declare it shall be so Amen. and is a chair without a roof which means you cannot from henceforth be building your own house when you don't build a chapel for God. Amen. This is the yoke we bear. You may save your money and build your own houses, but she shall build the house of the Lord first. Amen. And so we enthrone you as the apostle dressed and enthroned Hallelujah. in the nation of Ireland. Amen. In the name of Of the Father, Amen. in the name of the Son, Amen. and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We want to invite to the podium, all ladies around to stand with her whilst we present the horn of oil to her. anoint the people, baptize them, anoint them, make them queens and kings unto the Lord. Amen. This is for your office. Hallelujah. We welcome our resident pastor, Josephine, hold the horn. Let's put our hands Hallelujah. Woo! We want to take a quick photograph and we are done. We are going to sing and every one of you will come and congratulate them. Please don't come with empty hands. So we are not free bowl here. Sow a seed into the oil she has received. And whatever you give her, this blessing will go home with you. Thank you. Yeah, we can bring the chair here and then the rest can stand at the back. All ladies around to take photos. Now. 
The rest can stand at the back. The first people to take photo with him are the apostles in the land. Then we will join as bishops. So, Bishop Allen, let's stand somewhere and watch them. They were the red. Amen. Amen to that. Keep smiling. Mommy, you can smile now. Come on, come on. Smile. Okay. I think I wish I could take it. A full one. Okay, smile. Okay, beautiful. Oh, who's that? Okay. Okay, we are done. We can do mommy now. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hallelujah. Now, after this section, Apostle is going to um, do the benediction. And then, while everybody is seated, then you know, Apostle Stephanie would lead all the ministers out while everybody is seated. God bless you. We love you. And you are lifted in Jesus' name. All right, there is a hymn um, that will be sung by the um, choir of the church. Hold the hymn. Hold the voice. Hold the voice. Okay. Hold the fort. Hold the fort. Okay. Amen. That's, that's Bishop's best song.